Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Wayne County. We are a diverse congregation that welcomes you as you are, regardless of your age, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic status, or physical ability. We come together to seek deeper meaning and understanding from each other and the world around us. Your presence here today is a gift that brings us closer to that understanding. We are an active community that lives its values beyond the hours of Sunday service, and I would call your attention to the following. Thank you to everyone who helped with the garage sale and to all of you who donated items. Many hands make lighter work. Ann Wilson thanks you for your love and support over the years. Today is her last day. If you would like to find out more about our, excuse me, I have one, one more. Um, Jay has an announcement for road cleanup. Uh, it will be this coming Saturday, August 6th at 9 a.m. We welcome new folks to join us. If you're potentially interested, talk with Jay Clemmy after the service or see today's Google group message. If you would like to find out more about our activities, feel free to ask Karen Skubik, our membership coordinator after the service. Karen is right over here. I'd like to welcome all our visitors that are here today, both two- and four-legged. And during this part, uh, well, really before the actual service starts, uh, we offer for anyone who would like to stand up that is new to our fellowship uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, you don't have to, but that way we can know who, all, who you are better after the service and greet you properly. Um, hopefully we'll get to meet the four-legged visitors as well. So are there any two-legged visitors who <laughs> want to introduce themselves that might be here for the first time? I know Lisa's back for the second time, I think it is. Yeah, welcome Lisa, good to see you. Yeah, and any of our first-time visitors? Looks, looks like may, maybe not there, you know, that's, that's okay. You can be shy and uh, hopefully you'll spot them and maybe talk to them more privately after the, uh, after the service. So nice to have you all here. Now I'd ask that you open your minds and silence your cell phones for our time together.
Our chalice lighting this morning is by Phyllis L. Hubble. May we see the miracles of life and love in all the animals with which we share our lives. In the cold nose of a dog, in the warmth of a cat on your lap, in the wonder, wondrous otherness of the hamster and the songbird, in the graceful beauty of the goldfish, bless them all as they bless us. Now let us rise in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Come Sing a Song With Me. The music can be found in the gray hymnal number 346. Today's reading is Joy Coach by Kathy Sedeo. The first thing you should know about Effie is that her fur is soft and it will startle you. You'll be compelled to rub your palms slowly along her sides and press your cheeks against her velvet ear. You'll catch a whiff of her scent, an intoxicating mix of moist earth, turkey meatloaf, and fleece beds and you'll run the risk of having your face pummeled by her big, slick tongue. DNA testing asserts Effie is part Brittany Spaniel and part Labrador Retriever. A blab. <laughs> or if you prefer, a Latani. With her chestnut patches on white, she'd easily blend in with any pack of foxhounds hunting the moors. The next thing you should know about Effie is that she saved my life. When husband number two announced monogamy wasn't really his thing after all, in a way so similar to that of husband number one, 15 years earlier, that it seemed they compared notes. I plummeted into despair. This surprise revelation occurred on September 10th, 2001. The next morning, my anguish was magnified a hundredfold as the Twin Towers fell in the space of 12 hours. Previously unimaginable, 
events had devastated my sanguine reliance on a stable marriage and a secure country. I was a wreck. I bundled the shards of my shattered heart in a bubble wrap composed of friends, family, and faith. I could not accept that my husband, now living with another woman, was really leaving me. One winter night at 2 a.m., I lay sleepless in Tacoma yet again. My relentless humiliation and looming loneliness eclipsing any sense of light. Hopeless and so exhausted that breathing seemed too much work, I decided to pull all the prescription pills I could find in my house. As I shuffled around, Effie followed. She watched. She stood with me in the bathroom wondering why we weren't in bed. As I sat on the edge of the tub, grasping once more my seemingly absent God, Effie gently placed her bowling ball of a head on my lap. She kept it there as my, my tears soaked her muzzle. I grew aware, with genuine surprise, of a tiny ribbon of relief growing deep inside. The simple pleasure of her presence at a time when nothing else brought comfort was the first stepping stone on my path back to wholeness and happiness. Effie has been my joy coach ever since that moment. Her all-consuming bliss when discovering the several thousandth time her beloved plush hedgehog on the kitchen floor is a lesson in the art of living. She knows what's important. Play daily, experience the knownness, the nowness of every moment, speak volumes without words, and surround yourself with dear friends. Effie and I walk a few miles every morning, a treasure this time, when I cannot most easily pray. The bounty of my neighborhood combined with the absence of any sort of electronic screen frees my monkey mind to suspend its near ceaseless chattering. During these walks, I become aware of a different sort of prayer, simply enjoying the intimate presence of our extravagantly loving creator. No words, no thinking, just being. Being loved as is. Despite all my mistakes and messes, walks with Effie aren't just time to pray, they are prayer itself. My pure delight in this magnificent dog is soul work. It wedges open heart space that would otherwise seal tight and solidify into cynicism. I adopted Effie as a pup from the Kitsap Humane Society on the first business day of the year 2000, meaning she is now 15 years old. Our remaining time together is precious. Each morning that I awake to find her beside me and eager for another day's adventure, I, sh I shout, thanks God, for the gift of this living work of art, this indomitable angel, both blessing and balm. I love her beyond measure. I may not know how to pick a man, but I sure as hell know how to pick a dog. Good morning, friends. I'm Reverend Walter Clark, and I'm here this morning to, first of all, remind you all that when we have squirmy guests in our sanctuary, the urge for them, they're going to let you know that I need to move around a little bit. And that's OK. Squirmy guests are allowed to move around. This is our time where we honor our squirmy guests of four feet. And we, if they say, I want to walk around a little bit, don't think you're disturbing the sacred space. If anything, you are increasing its sacredness by listening to your squirmy friends. Thank you for sharing that story, Ivy. Powerful reminder of the simple beauty of love. Let us take a moment for centering meditation Breathe deep. It probably smells a little different in here. 
That's good. That's good. We're reminded today that there is more than just us. We're reminded today of the bonds we have with the rest of the world. Our furry friends making demands on us and us gladly obeying them, feeling part of something larger. We think today of all of the joys that do surround us, not just with our pets, but in our community. Recently, Tony and Sammy celebrated their 23rd anniversary. It is great to see love last so long. And I'm sure they will tell you love does not last so long without effort. We appreciate the effort you put into each other and into this community. We're also holding Dan O'Rourke in our hearts, who has recently had surgery. Things went very well, and he is going to be starting his occupational therapy. They've consulted with OSU Wexner on his subsequent treatment, and will be doing so with the Cleveland Clinic starting early next month, which I guess is tomorrow. But they do have a hard road ahead. I'm sure cards would be appreciated. We hold everybody in our community who is suffering. We hold everybody who has sorrows too great to share. We want you to know we hold you in our hearts. We are here to listen. We are here for you. And we celebrate all of the furry joy that is with us today and with us forever in our hearts. Blessed be. Our faith is centered on the belief that we can make this world a better place for all who dwell in it. In order to realize that vision, we need both the motivation and the means. Your donation helps the community put its faith into action by supporting our programming and facilities. This morning and throughout the month of July, donations that are not designated for another purpose will be split with the Worcester Hope Center, an organization that aims to foster self-confidence and to embrace the inherent dignity and worth of individuals by meeting them where they are and providing the most basic of necessities. The Hope Center has provided either food, clothing, haircuts, and or hygiene supplies to over 3,500 different families in Wayne County annually with an average of 150 plus volunteers monthly. Our offering will now be collected and gratefully received. Please join me in this unison reading. The words are on the screen. Let us be grateful when we are able to give, for many do not have that privilege. Let us be grateful for those who share their gifts with us, for we are enriched by their giving. Let us be grateful even for our needs, so that we may learn from the generosity of others. have a reflection on the love of animals. <laughs> 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 
Anatole France, a, a French poet, journalist, and novelist once said, and I, and I really like this, I think this is really, hits the nail on the head. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. The Sufi mystic Rumi said, teach them to be kind to animals, they will grow to be kind to people too. I think my life is richer, I think because I have a love and appreciation for the animal world. You know, all around us we see many sizes, many, uh, many sizes and shapes and in many places. Outdoors, outside our door, on a farm, cities and towns, in the woodlands and the wide open spaces of the wild. Also by our side as pets, companions, our fur babies, some with feathers, fins, and hooves. When my sister and I were young, we got a puppy, our parents got for us, and we learned to care for it, be responsible for him, play with him, of course, you had to play with him. And that caring for, formed a bond that rewarded us as well as him. It taught us the nurturing and connection of animals and humans. You know, you feel this when your dog comes running, tail wagging, lots of licky kisses, or when your cat rubs against you, does the headbutt, and purrs. <laughs> I know we have two cats. Um, they like to meet us at the door. They like to put us to bed, and of course, wake us up in the morning. <laughs> um, when, I, when I was a kid, I used to help my grandma uh, fill bird feeders, and since then, I have always loved backyard bird feeding. Um, you, you see so many birds, so many uh, songs that they, they see you, they sing songs to thank you for the tasty seeds, or at least I like to think they are. Um, they fly about in their acrobatic moves, all the colors and sizes. Some of them are bold, some of them are timid. Um, two of my favorites are cardinals with their cheerful song and their bright colors, and also the opposite of the quiet cooing of the morning dove. I think it's like relaxation therapy. And as I also watch them fly about, chase each other, and attend to their young. The veterinarian James Harriet said once, if having a soul means be able, being able to feel love, loyalty, and gratitude, then animals are better off than a lot of humans. This makes me think about the unconditional love that animals so easily give. They depend on us, learn to trust us, and we the same with them. It is love, loyalty, and gratitude for the life shared. Animals do bring so much joy to our human lives. Your dog barks at a stranger alerting you of possible danger. Your cat brings you a mouse on the doorstep. Your horse carries you through a course of jumps and prancing steps. Do you ever stop and just look in their eyes and, and, and notice that feeling, that love, the loving bond that you feel, that you see when they look at you and you look at them? It is one of life's true treasures, gifts, if you will, and the reason why it's so hard when we do lose a beloved pet, a, a family member. Personally, I believe they are like people who have passed, always with us in our life's journey, always in our hearts. Many indigenous peoples hold animals in high regard and seek wisdom and guidance from their spirit realm. Giving thanks to an animal that has passed or hunted, giving its life for them and to the great spirit for that animal Maybe there's a lesson there for people who don't treat animals or fellow humans well. Mahatma Gandhi has said that the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Doug, Doug, come here. Come here, Doug. No, you're not, Doug. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come on, nobody. Come on. Come on. 
This is Doug. This is Doug. Doug, eh, eh. sit, sit. I know you're on stage now. All right, Doug, eh, eh. no, you're not done. Down, 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 yes. Good boy, uh, you will get your turn. <laughs> this is Doug. Doug is my buddy. Doug is my dog, and I'm gonna let you know, we're gonna be doing the blessing in a little bit. We are doing a shorter service today because Doug has a very limited attention span. So he's a lot like, well, me. Um, but we love our pets. I can tell we love our pets. How many of you love your pets? Like, yeah, yeah, huh? You wouldn't be here if you didn't, right? Doug, do you see other dogs? You don't wanna be here anymore, do you? Tough. So I have a couple lessons that I think we all have learned from our pets. And I'm gonna break them into the two camps, the cats and the dogs. Now, I think we can tell who the dog people are here. I think it's pretty obvious. Where are my cat people at? There we go. All right, how many of you swing both ways? Cats and dogs. All right, very good, very good. Um, I'll tell you about which camp I firmly land in, because I do have both cats and dogs. But here's the lesson with dogs, and I think a lot of you can in, relate with this. What's the one thing about a dog? Is dogs love you more than anyone else will. Okay, Doug, you're not going to go make friends right now. Dogs will love you more than anyone else will, right? How many times have you felt... There you go. How many times have you felt that your dog loves you when you are in that situation very similar to what Ivy talked about? How many times when you feel like when you're absolute worst, that dog is letting you know that you are the most wonderful thing in the world? So many of us get reminded in our lives that the world seems to be against us that there's so many things going on that are horrible and wrong. How many feel like the world's just a little crazy right now? How many of you want to live in the world that the dog thinks you live in? <laughs> right? Right? Dogs are a wonderful reminder that you are worthy, that you have beauty. You should love yourself half as much as your dog does and you will be better for it. Dogs remind us that there is beauty within us. Which brings me to cats. I'm a cat person. I found this out the hard way. I thought I was a dog person all my life until I, got, until I met my wife, who was a cat person, and I was deathly allergic to cats. And then while we were dating, she decided to adopt three cats. I spent 10 years on antihistamines to get used to cats. And while Wendy and her lovely personality was a lot of it, I will say, yeah, she laughs because she knows the real story. The cats were a part of it as well. Because a cat reminds you that maybe you're not the center of the world, which sometimes we need. Let me give you an example. There have been times when I have been working on a sermon or a piece of writing or whatever it is, and I am spinning my wheels, right? I am going frantic at a different pace, and I'm just not going anywhere. And this is when my cat, and it will either be, it's been historically, I had one cat named Sidelines who died about 10 years ago. We called him Pig. Um, I have a cat now named Mowgli, who, when I have those moments, Mowgli jumps up in my lap, headbutts me, and nuzzles my neck and says, you need to stop. You need to stop. I am more important right now. <laughs> and what he doesn't know he's doing is he's saying, you need to stop because you're not going anywhere. You need to refocus. You need to take a time out, and you need to breathe. Pet me, I am soft, this will give you some endorphins, this will calm you down, and then come back. 
And that's usually around the time when he shows me his butt and then jumps off of my lap, right? I pet him for five minutes, he kisses my neck, and then he goes, nope, I'm done, you're good, right? He's like my little pocket therapist who only charges me in cat food and litter box duty, which thankfully my wife does. Pets are a reminder of both sides of our worthiness. Pets remind us that the world can be beautiful. Our dogs remind us that there's greatness in us and that we should love ourselves just as fiercely as our dogs do. And our cats remind us that there is beauty from a distance, that there is time to stop and think, that there is beauty in servitude. It sounds counterintuitive, but how many of you have cats who just are a little distant and the moment they jump in your lap, oh yeah, yeah, there's beauty in that. So we're gonna bless our animals. And here's how I, I would like to do this. I have my, yes, we'll get to you. Uh, I have my two blessing associates here. I would like, we're gonna set up a, stations at the aisles here. How many of you would like to have your cats blessed, right? I did a thing for all of our cat people because any true cat person would know not to bring your cat because they would not enjoy this. I brought these little packages with treats in them for your cat. Aww. Come and get in line here and I will be your cat blesser. And I will bless the treats. You let me know the name of your cat. And then you can take this home and give the blessing to your cat on their own terms. Because cats do everything on their own terms. And then we will have our dog folks here. We have some dog treats. If anyone wants to take some dog treats home, I'm going to leave them up here. And did anyone bring any photographs of pets who they've lost? If you have lost a pet, and you would like them blessed, their memory blessed, I'm sure any of us would be glad to say a blessing for those that we've lost. Because if all of us who have lost a pet know that they don't leave, they are with us. So are we ready to bless? We'll have Ivy and Jean. I'm going to, I'm going to steal my treats over here for the cats. If we need more, we'll put them up here. And as you are willing and able, come up. If you're having some trouble walking around, maybe wave us and we'll come to you. But just come on up and we'll start blessing the animals. Hi, what's your camera?
this is so much better than bringing the cats here in person. <laughs> I heard the story about what happened last time, and I am glad that I am unscathed. And I am glad the cats are not traumatized. Thank you all for bringing your pets. Thank you all for letting us have a moment with them. That was beautiful. We're going to wrap up our service with our closing hymn, number 21, For the Beauty of the Earth, Please Rise in Body or Spirit. For our benediction, remember that you are worthy. Live as though you are your dog's dream. Live into the life the dog thinks that you live. And remember, the cat would like to keep you humble. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for blessing our animals. Go in peace. <laughs>